Stephen Hawking once said that humanity will only survive if it leaves Earth and finds a new home planet. But the formidable problems that interstellar space presents us with, not to mention the fact that this cosmic way out also has a completely different catch, because we simply don't currently know of any exoplanets that are clearly habitable. Sure, we have already detected a whole series of alien worlds that appear to be potentially habitable, and yet the breakthrough has simply not yet been made. But even assuming that we do eventually succeed in discovering an Earth 2.0, would we even be able to reach it? The countdown has begun. According to Stephen Hawking, we only have 1,000 years left before the era of humanity finally becomes a thing of the past. The genius, who passed away in 2018, was in fact in no doubt that a devastating catastrophe would occur during this time, inevitably leading to our demise. Hawking did not base his not exactly rosy prognosis on some kind of force majeure, but simply on our own fault. These include, for example, nuclear wars, global warming, or viruses created by genetic engineering. And yet, there seems to be one last loophole that allows us to escape self-destruction after all. Hawking said, by then we should have spread out into space so that a disaster on Earth would not mean the end of humanity. But how realistic is such a scenario in the first place? And what does the word life-friendly actually mean in a cosmic context? Well, basically, for Earth-like life to develop, a celestial body must be located within the habitable zone of its home system, which means nothing other than that it must orbit its host star at a distance that allows the existence of water in a permanently liquid form. However, in the same breath, potentially life-friendly does not automatically mean a new home for humanity or even an Earth too. Quite the opposite, in fact, because, based on the latest findings, even Venus could be habitable. Well, provided you know how to survive in sulfuric acid, of course. While Venus, the poisonous stepsister of the Earth, with average surface temperatures of 464 degrees Celsius, immense pressure, and a gas envelope consisting mainly of carbon dioxide, is truly not an El Dorado for humanity. There could actually be microorganisms in its upper atmospheric layers that successfully defy these extreme adversities. And yet, a worthwhile alternative for the likes of us probably looks different. But what about all the exoplanets? After all, experts have now managed to detect almost 7,000 of these alien worlds orbiting stars other than the Sun. Are there no celestial bodies in this large group that could turn out to be Earth's cosmic twins? Well, a look at the list of potentially habitable planets could help answer this central question. This list is based on the Earth Similarity Index, or ESI for short, which indicates how closely a planet resembles our Earthly home in terms of energy flow, mass, and radius. And while Earth is the benchmark here with a value of 1, it's closely followed by Tea Garden B, a celestial body that scores an impressive 0.95 in this category. The Search for the Second Earth And indeed, Almost six years ago, a headline made the rounds that immediately caught people's attention. At the time, it was said that astronomers had detected two Earth twins in the habitable zone of the red dwarf star, Teegarten Star, which is only 12.5 light years away. But what this attestant planetary relationship looks like in reality is another matter altogether. After all, these are only conclusions and assumptions, not confirmed facts. But in theory, Tea Garden B and C appear promising, to put it mildly. After all, both celestial bodies are probably about the same size as Earth, and with 1.25 and 1.33 Earth masses respectively, only slightly heavier than it. And while the inner planet takes just under 5 days to orbit its host star, the outer planet takes just over 11 days. So we are dealing here with exoplanets that orbit their host star relatively close, but what would still be a planet in our system that would turn into a cosmic furnace due to this constellation is somewhat different in the depths of space. In fact, Teegarten star, a very cool red dwarf, has only one-tenth the radius of the Sun and just 8% of the Sun's mass. And so it happens that Teegarten B is not heated to insane temperatures, but instead experiences almost the same stellar radiation as our earthly home. But the planets differ all the more clearly when it comes to age. 
While our Earth, as is well known, has been around for 4.5 billion years, the companions of Tea Garden Star are thought to have been formed a good 8 billion years ago. But in terms of the question of life, this could even prove to be a great advantage, because if there really is extraterrestrial life there, it would have had plenty of time to develop. And if the Tea Guardians had also mastered the step to an intelligent civilization, they could even catch a glimpse of us in the foreseeable future. To be more precise, from 2044, as seen from Tea Garden Star, the Earth will pass directly in front of the Sun, and thus provide the alien observers with an exciting telescope motif. And yet, at this point, we should not forget that, despite all the suspected similarities to Earth, experts are still exercising a certain amount of restraint. On the one hand, this is because we simply do not yet have enough data about Tea Garden B to be able to make a final assessment, and on the other hand, it's because of the suspicion that the planet is subject to a runaway greenhouse effect, which, similar to Venus, causes temperatures to rise to unimagined heights. Exciting Discoveries and Unanswered Questions In 2020, NASA's Test Space Telescope scored a spectacular hit, tracking down not just another life-friendly world with TOI 700D, but also the second spot on the list of potentially habitable planets. That's because TOI 700D has an ESI value of 0.94. Located around 100 light years away, and once again in the realm of a red dwarf, TESS had actually identified the exoplanet and its two counterparts shortly after its launch in April 2018. However, at the time, the host star had been classified as a sun-like star which is why the planetary trio appeared too hot and too large to be Earth twins. But today, we know better, and we know that TOI 700 actually has only 40% of the Sun's mass and is only half as hot. In the period that followed, further analyses showed that the outermost planet TOI 700d is roughly the size of Earth, and its orbits also lie in the habitable zone of its star. And while it takes around 37 days for a complete orbit, it receives about 86% of the radiant energy that we get from the Sun on its journey. So far, so good, but now comes the big but. After all, there is still the fact that TOI 700D has a locked rotation, which means nothing more than that it always turns the same side towards its parent star. The scientists have again used a model to simulate how this constellation could affect the planet's climate. The result is that we are dealing here either with an ocean planet adorned with dense clouds or with a dry desert world with temperatures close to freezing. However, only future investigations will be able to show which case is actually true. In particular, the observations of the James Webb Telescope, which should provide us with detailed insights into the atmospheric conditions. The same applies, of course, to TOI 700E which was discovered in 2023 and is also under the exciting suspicion of being an Earth-like rocky planet. Is salvation out of reach? Whether proverbial second Earths really lie dormant in 100 light years is something we will only know in the future. Although we should not forget that 100 light years is truly no trifle. After all, one light year alone is a whopping 9.46 trillion kilometers and thus a distance that we simply cannot yet bridge. It doesn't help that Proxima b is only 4.2 light years away from us, because even with our current means, we would still need several millennia to cover this distance. And that is unfortunate, to say the least. Although Proxima b probably also has a locked rotation, there could be a narrow twilight zone between its hot day side and significantly colder night side, where the water could exist in a permanently liquid form and thus theoretically pave the way for the development of life. But what does this knowledge tell us from a purely practical point of view? Assuming that Hawking is right, and that the only way for us to survive is to look for a new home, and if we then also find a planet that is undoubtedly habitable, wouldn't this planetary salvation be out of reach for us anyway? Well, not necessarily. Experts are already working hard on concepts that will one day make the dream of interstellar travel a reality. One example is Breakthrough Starshot, which was launched with the participation of Stephen Hawking and aims to accelerate a probe equipped with a light sail to unimaginable speeds with the help of a gigantic laser array. However, the space on board the probe would be limited, to put it mildly, 
because it's actually supposed to be no larger than a microchip. The 1000 kilogram probe, which is to reach 10% of the speed of light using NASA's Sunbeam Drive and thus reach Proxima B in just 40 years. And yet the basic idea behind this concept seems quite simple. Instead of giving a spacecraft the fuel for its journey at the start, it is to be supplied with the necessary energy from the outside during its flight. The role of this cosmic continuous refueling station is assumed by an external platform that ensures the constant supply of energy via a particle beam. And although Breakthrough Starshot, Sunbeam and company are currently still far from moving beyond the status of an ambitious idea, they do show us that we already have theoretical ways and means of overcoming the vast distances of space and they nourish the hope that we may perhaps even succeed in migrating to alien planetary worlds at some point. But before that happens, you can still move to the subscribe button in a relaxed manner. Just press the thumbs up and subscribe now to never miss a new video from us again. We'll see you soon.